Hello, everybody. I'm making this video uh, generically. It's for $4.99 because um, I have some neat stuff I wanted to show you. And in the $4.99 online class, we're talking about um, in sheltered workshops, we're talking about the situation using um, different types of strategies, uh, reading and writing. And so I'm going to, this one's only about reading and only in particular about vocabulary, really. And I wanted to show you some stuff and I'm going to share this video with the 826 class, uh, my graduate class. I like to collect dictionaries and, and books that are useful for slang. And you can get all kinds of these and I want to show you some of these. I've got a whole series on books, but I wanted to talk about just kind of dictionaries and stuff. Now, in the, um, I thought it was interesting, they talk about cognates, C-O-G-N-A-T-E-S. Cognates is when you, the, the, you think you know the word because of it, the way it, the way it looks. So, for example, a cognate in Spanish and English might be the word, uh, um, de vestir. De vestir is, is to, I think, is to get undressed. But in English, we use it, and it's, it's not, it's really what's called a confusing cognate. You look at it, and it's D E V E S T I R in Spanish. And it looks, it reminds me of the word to divest. You know, vest is something you wear. Men in English, a vest is a piece of clothing. But devestere means to remove because you put a de in front of it. And we do that in English too. But the word, only sometimes we have di instead of de. But the word divest is used in business means to remove something from your business portfolio. I divested myself of stock from U.S. Steel. I thought, U.S. Steel's not doing good. I'm divesting myself. So I take it out of my, my portfolio. And so the word has become more, rather than clothing, it's about stock. So that's a confusing cognate. In, in England, in Spanish, de vestir say is to get undressed. And if I were to say, if I were to think that and I read that in Spanish and say, well, I'm going to go out and divest and myself and then I'm going to take a shower. That wouldn't make any sense in English because the cognates, even though the words have the word vest in them, they've changed meaning. And I thought this can be very interesting and, and can be very funny. If you've ever spoken Spanish and you made a mistake and you said to somebody in Spanish, you said, oh, soy embarazado or embarrassida, and you said, oh, I'm embarrassed, right? But it doesn't mean that in Spanish. It means I'm pregnant, okay? So that can be absolutely hilarious. You say, oh, I'm sorry, I, you know, a teacher makes a mistake and said, I'm so pregnant. <laughs> That's my reason for the mistake. So that can be a false cognate. Another word that can really be serious, you make a mistake, is that in Spanish, I think no molestame is don't bother me. So molestar means not to bother. But if somebody learning English said, oh, forgive me if I molest you, uh, that word totally doesn't mean that in English. The word molest is a very serious, uh, that's not a joke. And so molestar cannot be, a, a, an equal cognate or an equal looking word, similar shape. So they mention here about cognates being helpful, and they are in many cases. Um, they mention some here in the chapter, I'll think of a few here. Um, um, for instance, to inscribe is kind of from the word in Spanish to write, escribir. But uh, to write is not, the word we use, write, is probably from Anglo-Saxon, I would guess, the origin. It's, it's definitely not a French word, I don't think. But, it's, but it means that English has origins in, in Scandinavian, in German, in French, in Latin, 
sometimes in Spanish directly, but it's certainly from Romance languages. And so uh, English has a lot of words that have changed meaning, even if they look the same. And the same thing in Spanish, as I pointed out with embarrassed and molest, molestar, those words don't work and you'll actually get in trouble. So cognates or false cognates, ones that mislead you, are an interesting way to study. But, uh, you know, the, uh, I've written down an example like to assassinate, asesinar in Spanish and assassinate are the same word, but that only works sometimes. I just wanted to point that out because they mentioned that in chapter five in the cognate, that that's a good strategy. And I said, well, it could be a very dangerous strategy too. Now, um, another one that comes to mind is tranquilo, to be tranquil. Now, in English, we don't really say, please be more tranquil. But in Spanish, you could say tranquilo. You know, something is putting you at ease. We're more likely to say, you mean a pill like a tranquilizer or something? So you can, it, it, it can lead to really funny, interesting. You can go on the internet, I'm sure, and, and also find books about false cognates, English to Spanish. I've got a book somewhere, it's like a thousand of those, where it actually screws you up when you try to use that strategy. And of course, that only works in English and maybe a Romance language, like French or Spanish or, or Italian. Now, what I wanted to get to, and I'm just focusing on vocabulary, is I love dictionaries. And I'd written down that when you're teaching a concept to someone, they have to see the concept. Uh, you can't just read it and, and remember vocabulary from reading a word and somebody said, well, that means this. And unless you experience it or you see it or you see some representation, it doesn't mean anything to you. Just like I've got this shirt that says the dude, but if it's a, it's a general term that was used as a, as a slang, like, hey, dude. Now, of course, some people associate it with cowboys then it became kind of modern talk and maybe with hippies or California. Hey, dude, what's up? You know, kind of a general term like, hey, Charlie, or whatever. And they, people used to make up names or any, any Dick or George could do this. You know, they just use a men's name generically. Um, but the dude refers to the big Lebowski. So when you see this, and I, I'm wearing this, then you know that, you got to know the movie, The Big Lebowski, to really get the full uh, value of the term. The concept means you must know this movie. And it's very definitely a weird cultural movie unique to, you know, uh, Jeff Bridges and John Goodman and a couple other people. Watch it, big, book, look up The Big Lebowski sometime. You can see it there. Okay. So that's, a, that's another version of how would you know what I mean if I wrote that down? You know, this is another big Lebowski class. You'd say, what does that mean? Well, that's really specialized, almost slang, is slang. Now, for generic stuff where we want to get basic language to our students, we have these interesting things. This is a very old Oxford Picture Dictionary. I got more modern ones. And I like these because they'll have a map and you can actually go online and for your class, you can either create or you can buy, it's expensive to buy all this stuff. You can buy full maps that show like, this one shows a movie theater, like different uh, movie theater, movies, library, entertainments about leisure. This one's about dining, it shows them soft drinks, beer, cigarettes. Cigarettes aren't as common now, you know, cigarettes are, you just don't open, start smoking one on music and types of instruments. Now you could get, a, a, here's one I love, baseball. It's got all the places where they play the infield, the outfield, tennis, and it's got uh, fishing. So they got different things in here. And then you go over here and they've got field hockey, soccer, they get, even got jumping, you know. And you, this is an old dictionary, but it's got everything, vacuum cleaner. And you can tell some things have changed over the years. Vacuum cleaners don't look like that as much. And people don't, uh, here's tools. These don't change very much. 
But you can see these are very useful. I'm a big proponent that you get something like this. So the kid can have it and take it home. The parents can learn from it. It's very useful. Now, there are computer programs, and you can actually, even on a Google, you can go on and, and find out the pronunciation of any word. And you can find it somewhere on the internet. A Merriam-Webster, I use that when I have a difficult word in English. I don't know how to pronounce. So these are great. Now, here's another one. It's from uh, Hampton Brown. This is an old one, too. It's about 20 years old. And it's got, like, the yard, if you want to talk about, you know, your house, different types of houses, grass roof, houseboat, log cabin, um, adobe home, okay? So it goes into more detail, different types of houses. And you can, you can cheat. You don't have to buy these. You could just have kids make pictures. Have some of your students do this. You could even make something, if you have English and, and a Spanish class in your school, have them make big posters, English and Spanish, so that you show the word in both languages. You got fruits. Um, oh, this one is about uh, terms. It's, it's a dictionary with terms. What does dusty mean? The concept of dusty, concept of dry, drop, to drop something. Okay, so I love these books. Um, I get even fancier stuff. Now, I bought this because I wanted to know more about the elements. Now, these are great books for your school in general, but this book has all the elements. And you look at it and say, well, what, what's so cool about that? Well, you look how beautiful this is. Copper. What is that in Spanish? It's cupre. I think, think it is. Um, I'm, I hope I didn't say that wrong. My other wrong word. But um, you can see it goes into coins, and this is what copper looks like. And people actually have ingots of copper, like gold. Some people actually invest in copper when it gets to be rare, even though it's not as valuable as gold. And you get all kinds of cool things. This one is yttrium. I don't even know what it is. But this is a, I learned so much from this. And this is where leaping through books that are very interesting, not just a dictionary with words, but lots of pictures. Kids can learn so much, ESL or non-ESL kids. It doesn't matter. So the books and pictures are very critical, charts and things like that. Um, Finally, here's another dictionary, the Longman Dictionary of American English. I'm sure this has been updated, and, but this is an actual dictionary. Now, what's, what is the advantage of this particular dictionary? Well, this one had a CD in it that helps you, but the point is this dictionary, which is probably no longer published like this, it's different, but they only use 2,000 words to give the explanations, definitions of each word. So it's a limited dictionary. Have you ever looked up a word in a dictionary and you had to look up the words that explain what the word is? For ESL kids, EL kids, it's a huge issue. Like the word hybrid, what does hybrid mean? It says an animal or plant that is produced from parents of different breeds or types. Pretty simple words there, they might have to look up breeds but they should know the word produce and parents, padres, or something that is a mixture of two or more things. Like a car is a hybrid that can run on gas or batteries. A Prius, I own a Prius and it's a hybrid car. So this is cool stuff. So anytime you have a content focus of a particular class, whether it's in geography, social studies, history, Science, you can go through and find all kinds of cool um, dictionaries that will help you. Some dictionaries are thinner than this, and they're like some of these others, and they'll actually have a whole section with a lot of pictures in it. Okay, for instance, this one says eye, and it actually gives a little picture of the eye and shows parts of the eye. And that is uh, things that might be interested. And they show a little picture in there, not too many, much less. So I wanted to give you this because it's very important that students are going to have to learn more than what you have time to teach them. You can't teach them every word. They've got to learn on their own. And then the other part that goes with this is that uh, 
uh, and I mentioned that I think it's important to have pictures in the room. Uh, and as I said, you can make your own and you have students work on these from magazines cut out and, and you can make dictionaries. You can have students keep their own dictionary and that's useful, but unless they're pretty organized, it may not work quite as well. Or you can keep a class dictionary and everybody has to contribute words and it's a giant book and then you have different parts of it designated for different letters and you have it to where you can insert big sheets in it, you know, like a notebook. So you want to put things visually or in context so that people can go, wow, I, I understand what that is. I see what that is. Now, if you're getting something very complicated, like the parts of a boat or the parts of an airplane in great detail, then you're going to have to get more complicated dictionaries. But for the purposes of elementary and middle school, there, it's essential to have great picture books. It's cool. I like the one on the elements because it's so beautifully illustrated. So I do have other class, uh, other videos on uh, books. I have a bunch here, and I've already made those some, a few years ago. And so they'll show you different types of books. I use it in my multicultural class. But one other thing I want to mention are books that are of high interest but low reading level. And I think I have one here. I'm going to take a quick look. Um, I may not have too many here in my office. I don't see it right now. But uh, these are books that uh, talk about, these are books that talk about something of interest to kids. Like uh, I've got a whole bunch of them and then the, they're locked up now. It's after hours. But I get a book on tornadoes, a book on Bigfoot, UFOs. Uh, snowstorms, blizzards. Uh, I've got books on the deep sea, books on airplanes, books on famous people. And the books are written in very limited English, but not boring, you know, but they don't have really super long sentences. So they're not hard reading material. So a student wanting to understand could read and, and understand. And you what you want to get, and this is the key to this whole video, is you want to get free voluntary reading. What does that mean? Free means they read when they don't have to. It's not a sign. Voluntary means, of course, they want to do it. And, and uh, if you can get students to take books home to look at, even if they're, no matter what they are, reading is reading is reading. Any kind of reading will promote more acquisition of vocabulary. And that's how your students are going to speed up their learning and become more successful, is they need to be encouraged to learn on their own. And that's why you need the picture dictionaries. And, and also books, I've got, I'll show those to you in a later video. That's all I had to say right now. Now I do have more to say about writing, but I'm gonna do that in a separate video, which I'll probably do tomorrow. So whoever sees this, I hope this was of some value to you.